And so uh, let's just go ahead and start this off. We'll have some time for questions in, in a few minutes, but I have a few questions to kind of get things started. So if you, if you have some things you want to ask John, you might, you might consider those here uh, in, in just a few moments. So to get the uh, stage started, John, can you give us, you know, we're famous for elevator pitch competition here. So could you give us a 90 second elevator pitch on your most recent company, Barossa, which was recently sold to Oracle? Sure. Um, most of you, I would guess, are covered by either Bank of America or Wells Fargo as far as a, a banking customer relationship. And you may have noticed in your Wells Fargo account, uh, for example, um, you log into the account and you'll see a dialog box that manifests on the screen. Uh, it, it reads, um, your online security is very important to us. Uh, please wait while we verify your identity. And that's Barossa uh, technology, literally. Um, working behind the scenes. So you enter your username and password in a Wells Fargo app, and then uh, the software is going gonna, is gonna to reconcile you with your computer, your tendencies, a variety of attributes, all in, in real time. So it's, it's, it's further verifying you are who you say you are, stronger security, but in a purely um, software-based form. And traditionally, the industry was dominated by uh, one-time password-generating tokens, uh, smart cards, gadgetry. And um, the problem with those solutions is they're very expensive, so they're typically used in IT departments for 5,000 users or thereabouts. But Wells Fargo has 15 million retail users, and so to get a solution out to all of those users has to be um, um, able to be deployed uh, uh, logistically, so you have to be able to get a solution in everyone's hands. And then in, uh, in a gadget or related based approach, um, there are statistics that show in a million user population, a 15 million user population, it will take a, an infinite amount of time to get every user to be doing something different. By the way, later on I have a comment about uh, healthcare and why a mandate is necessary versus a subscription. And just for that example in software, is that you deal with a big group, you have to, you have to give them the software all at once or, or it's, it's not going to be adopted. Uh, very quickly, the Bank of America solution that, that you're familiar with are those pictures. Remember the, the images that you use, a lot of people nodding their heads. That was our key competitor. So we battled it out across the country with our solution and their solution. And uh, that solution was uh, acquired by RSA Security and then uh, our technology by, uh, by Oracle. So bottom line, it's a software-based approach to stronger security uh, than just a username and, and password. Great, we almost hit the 90 seconds there, I was going to cut you off, yeah. so I'm glad. <laughs> um, what was the catalyst for launching Verizon? Um, so two, two catalysts. One, back in 2003 uh, or thereabouts, we noticed that there was an alarming uptick in various attacks, like phishing. Uh, you haphazardly download the wrong program on your computer and it puts a Trojan horse up and your keystrokes are stolen. I mean, these things were really uh, 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 proliferating at a, at a rapid rate. And we appreciated that the internet was not designed with uh, uh, security in mind. It was designed rather with communications in mind. So the catalyst was, we thought this was going to be a big industry, that is security, specifically online security solutions. And the second catalyst is, uh, was we wanted to design a product where we could enter a password via a tool right in front of you. And if you were looking over our shoulder while we did it, still the process would be encrypted. It's kind of a holy grail in security. And so we designed this incredibly esoteric widget. It took us three weeks all night at Starbucks. We were so proud of it. To this day, Silicon Valley Bank is the only bank in the world that's, that's been able to deploy it. But it was still <laughs> something that rationalization and that um, uh, kept us going. Well, it sounds like you really love doing it. So do you regret selling to Oracle? Um, so, <laughs> um, so our, our youngest employee on the team um, right now is 26 years old, and um, for three years, um, you know, I have empirical data confirming that he basically gave up his early 20s to, to be working with us. I mean, I bore witness to relationship after relationship. It wasn't working for this poor kid. He was working 14-hour days, you know, seven days a week. He, 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 coming to the office explaining he was excited about this particular date and then we tell him he had to get on an airplane and, and, and that's all she wrote. So you feel a responsibility. That, that young person is um, you know, a millionaire today and I'd like to think that the company um, reciprocated for, for that sacrifice uh, he made. So I don't regret selling the company in that capacity. I think that um, you have a responsibility to your, to your employees and, and partners and investors. Um, one regret I had is um, I missed, though, along the same lines, the solidarity that, that takes place in building something and running something with it.